welcome back to our 10 minute tip. I'm Denise Mazzola from Everything Dog. Um, before I forget, be sure you like the video, share the video, hit subscribe, do whatever you need to do so that you get notified when we are on again. Today, continuing our conversation about aggression. So if you missed last week's um, 10 minute tip that we dropped, I talked about aggression and my definition of aggression, which is the intention to do harm. And I listed all the 11 different types of aggression that um, we're gonna be talking about over the next 11 weeks. And so today I want to specifically talk about resource guarding. Um, and resource guarding is when a dog gets defensive, ugly, cranky, mad, <laughs> those are all the words that I've heard, when they have possession of an object, something, okay? So you could have a dog that guards a food bowl you could have a dog that guards a water bowl. You could have a dog that guards toys, all their toys, just a particular toy. You could have a dog that guards um, space. So maybe the couch that they're laying on, maybe your bed, uh, maybe their bed. You could have a dog that guards stolen items. <laughs> That's always a fun one, right? Um, and you could have a dog that guards from humans, but does not guard from dogs. And you might have a dog that guards from other dogs, but doesn't guard from humans. And you can have a dog that does both, okay? So, and lastly, you can have a dog that guards from a distance, meaning the thing, the toy, the object, the food bowl is not in their possession, um, but they're guarding it, okay? So resource guarding, although a fairly simple definition in that it's, it's a dog that is defensive about something in his or her possession, it gets really complicated pretty quickly because if, you, if you're a dog, let's say you have a, um, I don't know, a four month old puppy that has started to guard things. That's a, that's a much more difficult prognosis than if your dog starts to guard at 18 months to two years. Because 18 months to two years is um, developmentally where we would like to see resource guarding. If you're gonna see it, I don't wanna see it at all, if it's gonna come up genetically for the dog, it's gonna come up at 18 months to two years, thereabouts, plus or minus. Now that's not to say it can't be, um, that the aggression can't be mitigated. So years ago, I got a call from a family that had uh, purchased a dog probably online, flew into Boston. Uh, not only was the dog covered with 25 ticks when they picked her up, but she also was a resource guarder. She'd steal the dishcloth and then she'd guard it. If they gave her a toy, then she'd guard that. So that, and that, and that started pretty early. So. The, the short story is they surrendered the dog to me. I did some work with the dog, playing the switch game, always trading up, always making it worth her while, never challenging her in any way was not necessary. And she became, and she was a really, she is a lovely dog. I placed her with a single woman who had grandchildren, but understood resource guarding. And I've had several reports afterwards that she was really lovely. She was a great hiking companion. Her grandkids loved her and kids are older now and there was no resource guarding issues whatsoever in that house. So it's more serious. You need to get on top of things right away in the correct way. And we're gonna link up another uh, 10 minute training tip where we show the beginning steps of preventing resource guarding by playing the switch game. Okay, I don't wanna get sidetracked with that. So early onset makes resource guarding um, more difficult. Uh, Earlier this year, we had a dog come in that was a resource guarder, and we knew it was going to be iffy whether this dog could um, make progress enough to be safely placed in a home. And um, what started to happen is if the dog took a toy out in the backyard, and the dog, we have a runner, so he, would, he could run around on this runner, but if he had the toy in the backyard, then nobody could go out to get the dog in because he would just start guarding whatever. He would guard the space where the toy was. He would charge at you if he even thought that you were gonna come and get the toy. So in our family room office area where our desks are set up, it's really an office and um, you know dogs have free range in there. If there were a toy or several toys out on the floor and you say you were gonna walk through to go to the laundry room, he became very defensive and would charge at you at that as well. So it was a very, very challenging situation. And, um, you know, and, and dogs that have to guard like from a distance like that and multiple things, there's 
there's a lot of anxiety involved in resource guarding. It comes from a place of anxiety. It does not come from dominance or alpha anything. So, you know, if that's sort of your nature that you're going to show your dog who's boss and you're going to dominate them and all that stuff, you know, just click away because this is not geared to um, that mentality whatsoever. And there's all kinds of science that supports uh, making the switch, playing the switch game, using classical conditioning and all that stuff. But today, I just want to give you sort of the overview of resource guarding. We're not going to solve resource guarding on today's video. Okay, so the other thing I want to just bring to your attention is if you're looking for more information, then I would highly suggest this book by Jean Donaldson, which is called Mine. And it's all about resource guarding. She talks a little bit about its evolution, ev sort of evolutionary background, like the dogs that guard things, the ones that don't give up their food, um, they're going to live, right? They're going to live to pass on their genes another day. And that gene keeps getting passed down and passed down. So there's definitely a genetic component to resource guarding. It is definitely something that can be mitigated early on if you do the right things. And again, you need to go look at that switch um, video that we did with Hank and Gio about how to trade up for your dog. Okay, guys. Um, the last thing that you need to pay attention to is if your dog has already bitten you or another dog over a resource guarding incident, you need to know how serious was that bite because that also will help you determine prognosis, liability, um, what you really what you're dealing with. It, you you got to have that whole picture. And there is another video as well in our um, on our 10 minute tips about bite inhibition and, and Ian Dunbar's bite scale. So you can take a look at that if your dog is already bitten and you, and you need some information regarding that. Okay, so resource guarding, early onset makes it worse. The more items and places and things the dog makes or guards makes it worse. Uh, if the dog guards from both people and dogs, of course, that's more catch, more tricky. And if your dog is guarding from a distance, like the thing isn't even in their possession and they're, and they're growling and posturing and things, that makes it even worse. So can be mitigated. There's definitely treatments out there for resource guarding, trading, trading up. Um, and be aware that if the resource guarding is pushing your button. So this is another thing. There's a lot of times where um, the dog starts to guard something and then it, it triggers something in some people. And some people are like, oh, oh, I want that. Oh, I need to take that right now for my dog. And the dog's like, mm, I don't think so. Or, you know, growling and carrying on. Doesn't trigger me. Dog starts to guard something. I'm happy to walk away and say, I don't want it anymore. It's yours, right? I can play that game. But just know that if you're somebody that is triggered by it, if it just kind of hits you in your gut and it makes you mad and you want to just show the dog who's who, um, maybe you need somebody else to help you with this <laughs> because that's not going to go really well for either one of you. All right, you guys, thanks for tuning in to this week's episode on our 10 minute tips and talked all about resource guarding. And I really look forward to seeing you next week where we will bring up another specific type of, of aggression and we'll talk about that in more depth. Until then.